Boyan Zivanovich. <clears throat> what word best describes Drupal? Flexible. What is your favorite Drupal superpower? Field API, the ability to model complex data structures entirely through the UI. That is a superpower. Yeah. Yeah, yeah? right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. I'm with Bojan Zivanovic. We are at the Drupal Dev Days in Seged, Hungary. Seged, famous for having hosted a DrupalCon already, and there is a second Drupal takeover in progress here. I guess there are about maybe, how many people would you say are here? I think they're expecting something like 300 yeah. in the end. It's a pretty good turnout so far. Yeah, and it's a great crowd. Yeah, it's a really interesting bunch of people. Also, uh, personally for me, I like that there are so many developers from Eastern Europe who are here who can make it, um, who have some trouble coming to the more expensive locations, some of the other parts of Europe too. Yeah, definitely. A lot of people from nearby, from the Balkans, from Eastern Europe, they are all here because we are so close. Okay. So... Bojan Zivanovic, you work for Commerce Guys. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what you do. And when I say us, I mean these people in here. Yeah, so I work for the product team at Commerce Guys, and we mostly do R&D. So in my history, I've been the lead developer of Commerce Kickstart V2. And uh, recently, we've been implementing OpenID Connect as a single sign-on solution and a way to have your own connect with Facebook. And we've also been uh, doing this really big framework for digital commerce, something that the Drupal world hasn't seen before, which includes a really powerful recurring capabilities that I can honestly say are pretty unique to Drupal at the moment and rival the commercial alternatives. Okay. I believe it's also a pretty much unique set of solutions within the entire open source e-commerce world. I would say yes. All right. We will get to that in just a moment. First of all, tell us uh, your very first Drupal memory. So I guess my first actual memory is DrupalCon Copenhagen. So I was a member of the community for years before that, but then I became a Summer of Code student and that was what propelled me into the community and really made me participate in all of the projects. So I, I remember going to the beer tasting event, which was one day before the actual DrupalCon and I was terrified. I didn't know anyone and then suddenly people started pouring in and hugging and being loud and I, I said, okay, I'm just going to blend into this wall and it's going to pass. But turns out people were super friendly and I met a lot of the people I really looked up to and it, it immediately started flowing. The conversation, the future cooperation with patches and it was great. And I loved how open the community was to people from Summer of Code just because it had such a successful history with it. So what do you like most about being part of the of Drupal community? Well, the fact that it's so open and that it's so uh, prone to collaboration. So the fact that someone is willing, willing to spend their professional time actually helping you help the project. It's not that common for uh, uh, an important professional to spend his evenings helping you just to write a patch and in that process making you become a better developer. People do a lot of things for each other without an, an obvious interest, I would say, and that's a great feeling. Is that for you, is that part of being an open source developer somehow? Yeah, but I would say that the feeling has always been much stronger in the Drupal community. What's been the most surprising thing to you about working in open source software over the years? To be honest, I'm not sure. 
Well, certainly the the amount of job opportunities. When I first yeah. got into open source, I think I was 12 and installing Linux. I didn't know that this would be my career. This would be my professional path and that so many people were not only making money from it, but also sharing the development costs and making this really cool economy around it. That's great for me. It's not just an armchair passion, but it's actually shaping our real lives. Let's talk about Drupal 8 just for a minute. What are you most excited about in Drupal 8? The thing I'm most excited about is our Entity API and how complete it is for the first time. In many ways, Drupal 7 was an unfinished product and for the first time we have this amazingly complex framework that allows you to model your data and the business logic around it to produce something amazing. So I can easily build uh, a uh, Drupal commerce that will allow me to do my own thing. And Drupal just gives me so much that other frameworks don't. And especially for me is the translation part. Even today, it's really hard to do multilingual websites with Drupal 7, almost impossibly hard. And Drupal 8, that makes that so ridiculously easy that it, it amazes me. Three core modules that get shipped with Drupal 8 make it completely translatable in every way. Yes. For me, the most exciting part of what you're mentioning about fields and entities is this is part of the story how Drupal gives an incredible amount of power to the user in the user interface and not just to developers who write code. And the, the level of data modeling and, and the level of complexity that you can get in configuration is pretty, pretty amazing. Yes, and I, I would say it's pretty unique to Drupal at the moment. So you work at Commerce Guys, yes. and you mentioned the Commerce licensing. Yes. Uh, what is that, a collection of modules, a collection of? Yes, it is a small ecosystem of modules providing everything you need for digital commerce, which is basically anything that you're selling but not shipping. So for example, a download or a support ticket or a subscription or, or anything similar. Access to premium content. Yes, certainly. And the big piece that you've just finished and released now um, focuses on the challenges around recurring billing, yes. which I understand to be a particularly complex area of e-commerce. And you told me that Drupal now has a uniquely functional system for this yes. in, the, in the open source world. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So. Um, at Commerce Guys, we are currently developing our cloud platform and we needed a way to build that. And uh, when you look at a SaaS product, it has the most complex use case that's usually not attacked in code. This is the same one that you can see with your mobile phone. So uh, when you look at how you use your mobile phone, you usually have multiple possible plans with your operator. You are billed on the first of the month. If you subscribe in the middle of the previous month, you're only charged for a part of that. Uh, there's some kind of free usage that you get. You get a free amount of minutes that you can use, but then if you talk more than that, there's a special price that applies to that. And then there's this whole set of processes, what happens when you don't pay your bill in time and how many times they're going to warn you before they cut you off. So this is something that we had to build and has to make possible. And for the first time, we can tackle absolutely any kind of billing use case. You can go, you can flip your switches based on the discussions you've had with your CFO and uh, the system will figure out the rest for you. And it's particularly interesting in the usage part because we are the ones who track the usage for your license. So if you're a mobile operator, we are the ones who are tracking the minutes and applying our own logic to figure out what's free and what's not and what should be done. If you're using a commercial solution, you need to do all of that in your own actual code. But we do all of this for you and it's a huge time saver and effort saver. And that's something that I haven't seen in other places. And so if I download this 
stack, then I can be the logic provider for any other business. Yeah, and it opens Drupal to a whole range of use cases where it, it didn't have access to. Because suddenly, if I'm a startup with my own product, I'm going to want to install Drupal just to handle the billing. Why? Because it's so easy, because I can click click together my payment plan and it will just work from that point on, which is amazing to me. So I can think of this as a complete billing API yes. that I can also configure in the user interface. Yes, and you can start from the simplest use case, which is, for example, you just want to bill your users for a monthly membership, which is really simple, nothing to it, and then you can scale up all the way to the metered billing and different plans and different kinds of billing cycles, which is the period between two charges, and you can plug into the, that process at any point if you need more business logic, and it's all available to you. And I thought you said it was a complex problem. Well, we did spend months uh, thinking about it and solving it. So, for example, you have the problem of what happens if the user is not paying up. Our solution is to threaten people with rules, but there was a need to develop a solution for threatening people with rules. I'm going to tweet that. <laughs> Drupal, threatening people with rules. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you.